بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم دس از محمد عاطف اینڈ دس از اسمری آف ٹو ڈیز لیسن ٹو ڈے وی ریزیوم دور لیسن ون یونٹ سیون انگلش اسٹوڈنٹ بک پیج نمبر نائنٹی سکس اینڈ نائنٹی سیون اینشنٹ سولائزیشن لاسٹ لاسٹ وی ہیو اسٹارٹیڈ دس یونٹ سیون اینڈ وی ہیو کمپلیٹیڈ پیج نمبر نائنٹی سکس فسٹ تھری ایکٹیویٹیز So today we resume the our lesson from the grammar topic which is subordinate clauses and uh, before we started the lesson I explained them that we have two main parts of the sentences and uh, I also explained them that the clause clause means a group of words or a part of a sentence so I told them that we have two main parts one main clause and number two subordinate clause main clause can gives us the complete meanings without any help of other sentences on the other hand subordinate clause always needs a main clause to clarify the meaning or to explain the complete sense of a sentence so To explain it more better, I have included a short tutorial video for the summary purpose as well in this video. So just watch and listen to the summary video. A clause that does not make complete sense by itself and depends on the main clause is called the subordinate or dependent clause. The subordinate <coughs> clause tells us something more about the main clause it can never stand on its own a subordinate clause is usually introduced with the help of words such as that why when what how if who which where because since as etc In our earlier example the first clause is called the main clause and the second clause is called the subordinate clause Let's take a look at one more example of a subordinate clause we played on the beach till it was sunset This sentence contains two clauses We played on the beach and till it was sunset. The first clause has the subject we and the predicate played on the beach. It makes complete sense by itself. Therefore, it is the main clause. The second clause has the subject it and the predicate was sunset. It does not make complete sense by itself. The conjunction till joins this clause to the main clause. Therefore, it is the subordinate clause. There are three types of subordinate clauses. A noun clause, an adjective clause and an adverb clause. The subordinate clause which does the work of a noun is called a noun clause. For example, Zizi knew that Lara was taking the book home. This sentence has two clauses. Zizi knew and that Lara was taking the book home. The first clause is the main clause since it makes complete sense by itself the second clause is a subordinate clause since it does not make complete sense by itself moreover the subordinate clause acts as the object of the verb new and does the work of a noun hence it is a noun clause The subordinate clause 
which does the work of an adjective is called an adjective clause. For example, the book that she took home was very heavy. This sentence has two clauses. The book was very heavy and that she took home. The first clause is the main clause since it makes complete sense by itself. The second clause is a subordinate clause since it does not make complete sense by itself. Moreover, the subordinate clause describes the noun book in the main clause and does the work of an adjective. Hence, it is an adjective clause. The subordinate clause which does the work of an adverb is called an adverb clause. For example, Lara was very tired when she reached home. This sentence has two clauses. Lara was very tired and when she reached home. The first clause is the main clause since it makes complete sense by itself. The second clause is a subordinate clause since it does not make complete sense by itself. Moreover, the subordinate clause modifies the verb was in the main clause and does the work of an adverb. Hence, it is an adverb clause. So that was the explanation of uh, the grammar topic. Then I asked the students to match these main clauses, one, two, and three, with the uh, subordinate clauses A, B, and C. So they matched it, and uh, I discussed the answers verbally. So I'm going to discuss the answers as well again. So the first one, I think that uh, the answer is B. Second one, I know that. And the answer is C. Third one, I believe that. And the answer is A. So that was the activity four. Then we have activity five and activity six. <clears throat> In activity five, we have some statements. Okay. We have a main clause. Is, is it true that? And we have these uh, subordinate clauses. So we have to guess the answers and then we have to verify them with the help of these exercise six pictures so here is the first sentence is it true that all the organs were taken out of the pharaoh's body before mummification so it's true yes the ancient egyptians used pictures and not words to show ideas yes zero is not used in roman numerals correct true it took one month to made a, make a mummy false so these are the statements so we verified it with the help of these statements in exercise six and then i displayed the answers as well i'm going to include it in the summary purpose just hold on So here are the answers for activity six. So that's all for today's lesson. Thank you very much for your participation. Take care and goodbye.